it's like you make a good batch, but then he just adds a drop of poison in there and it makes the whole thing bad. Everything's really good. And then there's just enough shit. Okay, that's what one former Buffalo Bill had to say in part two of the McDermott problem. Chucked back in with this player this week. Wasn't surprised that another Buffalo Bill season ended the way it did. Jim, here we are again. Tyler, Five straight that? seasons of numbing, demoralizing, what the hell just happened, Buffalo Bills playoff football. Um, each game kind of tells a different story, and we've got the time to uh, try to make sense of this all here on the Go Long Show, fueled by our good friends at Fatty Beer here in Western New York, which I'd imagine they're doing good business on a week like this, right, Jim? I mean, you've got the seasonal depression of it being cold and snowy. Now, football's over for the locals. What do you do? You, you get on in there to Fatty and you you pick up some stouts, but... This was a, a game, this was a season that was ripe for the taking. This was a season that you it was all set up for you if you're the Buffalo Bills. We've talked about it, right? We got into it on the preview show. You get Mahomes, you get the Kansas City Chiefs, you get Andy Reid, you get Travis Kelsey, you get that juggernaut in your house when they haven't really been right all season. We can We can touch on the Chiefs angle of this, but... This isn't the same Chiefs team, same Chiefs offense that they've been facing since passing on Patrick Mahomes themselves. But it's the same result. There, there. I, I was, I was thinking of you, Jim. Like that, that shot of Patrick Mahomes just joyfully prancing off the field. Right, you've got Bills fans throwing snowballs at him. You know, on one side of the field, there were Bills fans at the other end just screaming obscenities, obscenities and just awful things to Gabe Davis, I guess. I just saw that. Uh, but as Mahomes going off, is going off, he's catching some snowballs. And I guess there were other fans that were sending Tyler Bass death threats. So kind of hitting all angles there, I suppose. Uh, but I was thinking of that, that scene of Mahomes kind of triumphantly trotting off the stadium and what's going through Terry Pagula's mind as he, as he sees that. What do you think? You would know. So, no, we never know what's going through anybody's – somebody else's mind, I don't know. That's true. But what I would guess is Terry wanted to throw snowballs at probably myself, Doug Whaley, Sean McDermott, um, the people that he asked if any of us wanted to draft Patrick Mahomes. And, okay, so I think his – that trusted room of us, I think he would throw snowballs at us. And I think Patrick Mahomes probably hugs Andy Reid every night after, especially after playing here in Buffalo the other night, probably thinking, I'm so happy, you know, that it was, I got to play for you. I, I do believe that. Yeah, there's a I, lot I, of what could have been with Rick Dennison and David Culley. You know, that's, and, the, that's and, the counterfactual there. And a complete overhaul of an offensive staff. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sean Sean has overhauled that staff, which would have been Mahomes' rookie year. And we've talked about this a lot. I don't know how much you want to get into that. But going back to what they were thinking, I just feel like they're – Terry, I, I'm sure he's hit his limit with seeing Mahomes, figuring I – mean, it, it, he's hit his limit. It's time to win, time to get past it. This was the year to do it, as you and I have talked about. It was set up perfectly. I don't care about the injuries on defense. I don't want to hear it. You've done fine against the top offenses every week. Um, it was there. The game was there. We can get into some things that we both thought were a little whatever as far as changing the game. But as far as recovering from this, Tyler, this is going to take time. Can Here's how I'll just spin it to you quick, and then we'll get into the game. Can you imagine right now, just even wanting to play a regular season game, if you're the Buffalo Bills next season, like think about how pointless the regular season has become. Like you are judged on the postseason. You know you're going to get there. You have Josh Allen. The regular, if you don't get to the playoffs, you're getting fired. You know, I'm saying, I'm serious. Like yeah. the playoffs, 
the playoffs need to be, and we've talked about this, this is how it was in New Orleans. The playoffs need to be, I mean, the regular season needs to be your tune-up and make sure you're hot and healthy heading into the playoffs. They were neither this year. I don't care how many games they won in a row. You and I talked about it. They weren't hot. They weren't playing great on either. You know what I mean? You could see it on both sides of the ball. They didn't crush the Chargers with Easton Stick. They didn't crush Zappi. They got by. They got the win that they needed to win to get in the playoffs, but they weren't hot and healthy. And, and it showed, and we'll get into this, because I want to talk a lot about the skilled position players that let us let, let Josh Allen down and the Bills. But anyway, point being, this has to, it, it's time now to figure a way to get hot and healthy next season um, for the playoffs, because this is it. The expectations are Super Bowl or bust every year, as long as he's the quarterback. I mean, you can already hear the spin. You can already hear the sell job out of one Bill's drive on, oh, we were six and six and made this triumphant run to the 44% club that makes the AFC postseason, right? They, yeah, they joined the 44 percenters. Um, but it's all by design. It's all by the NFL's design for teams to to ebb and flow and up and down. I mean, I'm thinking last year with the Packers, they're four and eight. Then they kind of get into the easier chunk of their schedule and their one win at Lambeau against the Lions from getting in. I yeah, it, it's it's gonna be interesting to see how the messaging is set because you know, two years ago you had the insanity of 13 seconds at Arrowhead. All-time classic. You know, these two teams will be playing each other for the next three decades. All that stuff from Romo and Nance. Oh my god, Tony Romo. Um, and then last year, I mean, you have this surreal incident of a player's heart stopping on the field. We, I'll never forget that show we did after that. It was unforgettable. I was there in Cincinnati. It affected the team in a profound way. Um, and you give Sean McDermott all the credit in the world. I think we all do. that to, to guide a team through an unprecedented situation, feather in the cap for sure. Uh, but that was kind of, you know, Another baked in excuse, I think, internally that they, you know, privately were, were saying amongst each other. Yeah, the team just, the heads weren't really right into the Cincinnati game. Okay. With its injuries now? Like the Chiefs had players dropping one by one in the game. Like Willie Gay, McDuffie. See, I mean, uh, one by one on defense and their defense figured it out. If we'll get into the nuts and bolts. Like that first half, yeah, the Chiefs are getting rolled. But Steve Spagnolo, what a job. The adjustments that he made to clamp down on that running game as it progressed and get the stops they needed to get. Like they figured shit out on defense, Kansas City. So I guess, I guess injuries is, is the excuse to if Terry Pagula and ownership if you're trying to explain this season and – and I, and is it is the sell job this uh, triumphant overcoming of adversity? That adversity being your head coach's own training camp speech a few years ago being made public, telling players they need to communicate like the nine eleven terrorists. Which I only bring that up because that is the anecdote that the team itself isolated and decided to focus on in that press conference. It was isolating that, making that what they wanted to address. And all of a sudden, you know, that becomes discussed before Von Miller playing against the Chiefs amid his disgusting allegations well before that. So I, I is that how it spun? Like, oh, we we're six and six and we overcame all this adversity. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just feel like my point is, and we, 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 we talked about what, what this game could do to this team. It's To me, it's looking like a team that is maxed out. Maxed out with this coach. Seven years in. Five straight crushing playoff defeats. Wasting a Hall of Fame talent in Josh Allen. Philosophically. I'm, I'm all over the place, Jim, because I really want to hear what you think about this offense, and, and we'll get into it later. But I'm I'm seeing a philosophical clash of 
a team that looks like it wants to ground and pound. I mean, they looks like they want this power rushing attack. I mean, hell, it worked against Dallas. It squeaked you by the zappies and the sticks and the Mason Rudolphs. Um, and it was working really well against the Chiefs. Allen being a part of that rushing game until they shut it down. And it, look, if you want to win four playoff games in a row, you need Josh Allen to be Josh Allen throwing the throwing the seed all over the yard. Like you need that. You need you. They just completely changed philosophically, in my opinion, for the worst through a winning streak, which it's it's kind of hard to like make that case when, when you're winning games. I get it, but almost in a way that winning streak was, was kind of fool's gold because you're you're gonna need to throw the ball deep. You're gonna need to be explosive. They weren't the explosive team through the air. The chief, the Chiefs are kind of able to toggle between playing styles better. They 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 had the explosive plays to Kelsey to MVS down the field, and I don't know. I guess if, if the plan for the Bills into twenty twenty four is to run the ball and be this power rushing team, um, good luck. I guess I, I guess that's another new way to waste Josh Allen. Uh, I I think that would be a a grave mistake. And oh, by the way, you've got so many decisions to make financially. So many free agents are going to leave. Go right down the list. I don't. I, there's not much wiggle room for you to do much. Um, you just got to have to draft better. But that's a lot there. You just take it wherever you want, Jim. I, I mean, this this game had everything. How about we let's stay on. Let's do offense. Bills offense first. Against Chiefs defense, let's. Stick that sounds to that. good. Yeah, because I like how what, you. What's you your these. interpretation of where? I mean, because it's hard to knock Joe Brady because no, they they were winning. It looks like those coaches in the booth are having a lot more fun. You, you pointed that out. Like James Cook is a Pro Bowl running back. I mean, he he was he, a weapon. Yeah, we're gonna talk about him. Mm -hmm. So the direction of the offense and what you saw. So what I saw was what everybody saw with the, you know, second greatest quarterback in the league, you know, arguably. You can go with – I'm not going to argue it, but we know Mahomes is the best. Arguably, Josh Allen's second best. He did everything he could. What I saw were the skilled players not stepping up, not trying to be champions. Champions make the, the Diggs play. Hey, Diggs, you made the damn catch in Minnesota – that I have up on my wall as the worst bad beat of my gambling career. You tell me you couldn't make that catch. Sherfield got to make something, do something. I mean, it, my, my issue and cook, let's talk about cook. I see the talent, but there has to be some accountability and consistency with him before he's going to, you know, before you can just turn it over to him. He still coughs it up. He still drops the ball every game. I question, I don't necessarily love his running style. Um, a little bit of get what's given to him. I thought when they needed him in that fourth quarter a little bit on some of those runs, they were ugly. Now, I know they weren't blocked up great, but be a running back. I always use Shady McCoy. Put the pit tape on when he was at Pitt. There was no other players on the team. There was one guy that every team tried to stop, Shady McCoy. They couldn't. So... My point is, when you're special, you'll find a way to get some tough yards. So I have, I'm not, and I do like Cook. Like, I'm not trying to say, because you can see the game breaking speed, the explosion, you know, you see where he can help. But the consistency and accountability has to step up for him to, to be a champion. Drops, drops are not signs of championship teams. That's slop. That's slop. That's so what anyway. we saw out of Kansas City all year. It was a role reversal. And it's why. Like you've got MV, MBS making these plays. Made the catch. Made the catch. And the Bills are dropping the ball. So that's my take on that. And, and we talked about this last week before this game. And I said, this team is going to break up if they lose. Like this, this is the last run of this core, of the core, you know, the core group. You're going to see, we're going to see new names and faces next year. It has to happen. Um, to your point. I think the ceiling I, – th this team hasn't hit a ceiling because they have Josh Allen. But the current team, the roster, to your point, I think it hit the ceiling. 
I mean, it, it's enough. That was not, that wasn't good football. The quarterback was good football. The defense gave it everything they had. I'm not going to even overanalyze the defense. I will overanalyze that defensive line if you want to talk about that, because I think. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I, hey, the defensive line was healthy, Jim. Healthy and invested in. Yeah. Where was the great Ed Oliver that I heard about all year that I keep trying to tell everybody a highlight play every now and then doesn't mean you're a dominant player. The guy jumps around blocks. He wins off the snap because he is crazy quick and he plays hard and he is tough. But man, he's not Tyler. The difference between an Ed Oliver, who's just a rotational good defensive tackle and possibly the greatest defensive tackle we've ever seen play football. You saw the impact of 95 Chris Jones. I tried to say that last week. I, I personally have always thought he's better than Aaron Donald, but we don't have to debate that. You're still just talking about the two greatest. What he did on that rush from defensive end, mind you, not defensive tackle. They put him out at defensive end because that's what you do with special players. He pushed, he walked Dawkins right into him. That was the game. You see the highlights 500 times. That was a layup. Josh thought it was a layup. The way he threw it, you could tell he was relaxed. Yeah. He never thought Dawkins would get walked back. So anyway, point being is that's the difference I want people to think about. When you when you take a defensive tackle as high as Ed Oliver, don't set the bar that you're happy that you notice him. The bar should be dominate the game, make an impact play in the playoffs as a first-round pick and not disappear. Ed just, Oliver they, was invisible last year against Cincinnati. He was embarrassed Tyler. against Cincinnati. If you study him. And, and the excuse then was, well, Daquan Jones wasn't there. He didn't He's, have big Daquan. Well, Daquan was there in this game. And guess what? You had one tackle from Daquan Jones. You had one tackle from Matt Oliver. You had one tackle from Greg Russo. A lot of money, a lot of draft capital. And oh, yeah, Von Miller, they're, they're paying him quite a bit too. Two tackles. And it was like, oh, my God. That Von Miller's making an impact. It's like it's it's gotten to that point where he's like, you know, the slow kid at the high school track meet finishing the uh the mile run, you know, a full lap behind everybody else. He's getting the pity clap as he crosses the line, you know, because he's able to finish it alive. That that's where Von Miller basically is for the Bills. He's getting the pity clap during games. Oh, Von Von Miller. That that guy that we're paying a gazillion dollars to, he's he's making an impact. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's embarrassing what they got. So don't tell me the injuries are a viable excuse. Like, it is when A.J. Klein is singled up on Travis Kelsey, but then why is he in that situation? Why are you not just clouding Travis Kelsey then? Like, okay, that's a disadvantage that you have. Do something about it. And the defensive line should have been the strength. That's where the investment was made in the draft and free agency. At the expense, Jim, of everything on the other side of the ball, when you're 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 passing on wide receivers and tight ends and weapons for Josh Allen, you know when they inconceivably lost at Arrowhead, those fateful 13 seconds when Sean McDermott calls for the touchback and took the wheel defensively with those two Kodak moments before those two plays and they lose that game after, after that game, it should have been let's load up. Like this is what it takes to beat the chiefs firepower. You went toe to toe with Mahomes into Mahomes' house. Like look at the glass half full, look at the positivity out of that. And instead the investments were made on the D line as Ricky waters once said in the 1990s, for who, for what? I have a T-shirt of that. <laughs> a green shirt with the Eagles that says, for who, for what? He is, <laughs> he is also a Bishop McDevitt graduate of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, my high school and Shady McCoy's high school. Anyway. I kind of feel bad for Ricky Waters, though. He was a, I mean, he was a hall of very good running back, and he's kind of known for that. I think, right? yeah, I'm, I, I'm always saying, till he and Sterling Sharp – if they're not in the hall, I'm good. Those two, Sterling Sharp and Ricky Waters, come on. Anyway, I, um, I love the for who, for what, though. 
<clears throat> but to your point, Tyler, as far as the we like, we were just talking about the defensive line and the secondary, their investments to beat the Chiefs, to beat the Bengals, to beat these great quarterbacks has been made on defense. And the returns, I don't know right now. I wouldn't feel too happy about that defensive line. They, they don't have that. Their defensive ends are all thin, lean. I need to see some power, nasty. I, I would like to see a little nastiness. Up, up. I, th to me, a D-line is always about Chris Jones. I'm not saying they make him on trees, but a Khalil Mack isn't 6'5". Like Leonard Floyd and Rousseau, yeah. they're long, lean. Linear builds. Linear. I'm, I'm looking for some power. I want that, like, give me that one arm. Give me that one arm, like, you're just going to walk a guy back and you can dip around the corner. You know, those special guys, they look, they look different and they push you around and they're nasty. Even Crosby and even Hutchinson, they, they're, they're violent, like dominant, violent, nasty pass rushers that beat every player, every game. Would you agree? Right. They're kind of like the, uh, I noticed the, them the old, the old man strength, the old there dad, is. Hairy is. arm strength where they can the just YMCA, kind of push you around. Yeah, YMCA. P post up, post natural. up basketball player, natural. I need I need some violence. And I'm not saying they're not tough and they don't play hard because they do. But even Leonard, like all those guys, Floyd. Here's what's interesting, though, Jim. Like, and Chris Sims made this point. I should actually pull up the exact numbers here while I bring it up. But, I mean, we – Obviously, we talk about the Packers a lot here at Go Long, and look at what they've done since they drafted Jordan Love. They drafted him in 2000. Since then, they've drafted four wide receivers, three tight ends in rounds one through four. The Bills drafted Josh Allen in 2018. Since then, they've drafted one wide receiver and two tight ends rounds one through four. Gabe Davis being that one player a fourth rounder so and if that's how you're investing if, which i think he's a fifth rounder right yeah. yeah that's what i said he was that's what i was trying to think fifth rounder and he's just a guy i like him he's you love having him but he's just a guy i mean he's small just good player but you're you're getting a cost controlled player like that that's what they should have been doing knowing that investment in josh allen is coming 258 mil you can get receivers out of college that can play right away and make an impact in a big way day one. With the way these college offenses are, look at look at Green Bay. I mean, they, they, they're the youngest team to ever make the playoffs. You've got Romeo Dobbs, Dontavian Wicks, Christian Watson, obviously. I mean, they pick up Bo Melton. Uh, I mean, you've got uh, a lot of unknowns, a lot of young players. I'm sorry, Jaden Reed in the slot, one of the best rookie receivers this year. Look at rookie receivers all over the NFL. Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, Uka Nakua. Like, why not take a stab at one of these guys? It's too important. You're doing a disservice to Josh Allen by not drafting receivers. Well, to add to your point, if you're not going to load up the quarterback, you can't miss – on these other picks on the defensive side. Yeah. Like like we're talking about. How do Elam how do Elam look? The corner. That's so good. I mean we can go, I mean, you can go on and on with these picks. Like Josh Allen is covering up a lot of things. Great quarterbacks do that. Um I I, I almost feel like He's so great. We're, we're not really analyzing the whole Dorsey, Joe Brady thing. Everybody's fine with it, but the impact wasn't in the stats. No. So, I mean, point being, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. Josh Allen's happy with, and we see how he's playing. I, he looks better than he did with Dorsey. I think we would agree on that. Um, so if that was the reason they did it, then that was well done because make, but then it even goes back to your point even more. Keep, Keep catering to the quarterback. If that's who he wants as his coordinator, great. Um, talk to him about the offense right now. Because there is some, there is no connection with receivers right now. 
even, you know, you know, he loves the tight ends, but those guys are mm -hmm. Kincaid. Now we're talking about draft picks. That that's a hell of a pick that that's home run. Totally agree. Draft yeah, a weapon, use a weapon. Well, it goes back to what you just said. Give him a weapon. Yeah. And the decline yeah. of digs. Now that they may not have whatever happened, whatever happened. When I say decline, decline in his stats. I don't, I still think he can play, but that was garbage yesterday. Like we, that was when they, that's what you pay him for. That's what right. you went and signed him for that moment. Yeah. That moment right there. Yeah. You, you pay Josh Allen to make that throw that only a couple people in the world can make. And then you pay Diggs to make that catch that only a couple people can make him being one of them. That was a huge letdown. <laughs> what else can we say about Josh Allen? That throw. Nothing. What was Nothing. it 65, 70 yards through the air? Nothing. Like I, I don't know. It's it's not worth right. Ryan, Ryan Clark. I like Ryan Clark as far as I listen to him on you know on ESPN and I respect his career. Everything he did was even crazy coming out of college, undrafted, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um but he was he might have embarrassed himself pretty much this morning. He pretty much was saying Josh Allen's at home watching again. Like all he does is yeah, basically just saying he just loses and we don't say it and all we, we praise him, but all he does is lose. It was, it was a pretty pathetic, I think even Greenberg was Orlovsky and Rex Ryan were pretty much like what is yes, you're on your own on this one, man. Like nobody knows what you're talking about. Point being is there is nothing to talk about Josh Allen. The throw to Sherfield right on the shoulder. It, 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 like, the Shakir what touchdown. About the, Sh the Shakir throw. I mean, that was one of the best throws I've seen in in my. I rewound I mean, it. Really, I don't think people understand how tough it. that throw I don't, is. I don't know. How go try. Go try that in your backyard once. You can't even turn your yeah. body to make the throw, let alone whip it w with a flick going to your left as a right hander. It's nuts. What that touchdown was nuts. He couldn't be off by more than four inches, too. Like it, it had to be. Right there, right Put through a mailbox. Shakira, Shakira, you know what I mean. <laughs> and I, I say Shakir is a dime a dozen. I, I, I take that back. I mean, he's made some nice plays for them. As far as he's a good player, he's not a. He's just a product of the system. But he looks like he makes some good catches. His body control. So he's shown some accountability, good stuff for them. But he's not a difference maker. Yeah, I don't know where you're gonna find what you're gonna to just dra draft one, trade up for one. They don't necessarily even get to free agency. And Diggs would, is would, hard to move, that? but he's unhappy, I guess. He didn't talk. Here, you know, we got to guess what's going through Diggs' head because he never talks after these games. Something it's it's real. I mean, I I I always said everything was fine, but for him to drop off like now, now I have issues when you're not catching the ball. That's all. Mm -hmm. Like that's on you, Stefan. Like <laughs> you had a chance to make another his like your your name's already in history for what you did in Minnesota. You had another chance to make history. That's all. And he had a big catch against Miami. I mean, he's that's I, I love everything about him. I stopped game. short of saying that he's washed or shot. Like he's not. I don't think I don't he, think is, think he is. I think he looks good. I just can't believe he didn't catch it. Yeah. Yeah. Who would who would have thought Marquez Valdez Scandling yeah, love making that. the catches that Stefan Diggs cannot? I know something I wanted to ask you about that I I do have an issue with how does Kelsey like I don't know. I have an issue with Kelsey period scoring touchdowns in that game. There's you can take him out of the game, can't you, at this point in his career? I mean I was think thinking about this. this. That, that you know the one touchdown looked like a busted coverage. Somebody, some something happened there that was wide open. Which still, how are you not? You know there has to be some way. You got to pay attention to Kelsey. And then that little swing on the goal line. I mean, whatever they blocked it up, and Kelsey, Kelsey did it. You know what Kelsey did a great job of on that touchdown? He didn't reach out because yeah. that was if you notice, he didn't even attempt to. Because there are coaches like um, I, I, I know that 
they just beg you guys. They beg ball carriers not to reach out unless it's probably fourth quarter, you know, fourth down, last play, whatever. But anyway, yeah, maybe, maybe maybe McCall Hardman shouldn't do that, right? Why are you? Can I just can I just touch on that rule real quick, Jim? Because I go know ahead. It, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Like I I I know that it drives fans bonkers every time it happens. I mean, the older I've gotten and the more I watch football, the more I love that rule. And I, I think Jeremy Follower or somebody said the owners were going to take a look at it and might like, don't change it. No. I'm hey, if you. you're going to score a touchdown, that touchdown needs to be earned. You can't just be lollygagging and las- lackadaisical and willy-nilly just throwing it out with one hand. Like he's got to know that if you're going to stick the ball over that line, there could be Jordan Poyer which was a great play by Poyer, one of those forgotten plays in this game, for him to storm over and force that fumble. Amazing. Amazing. That was, and that's the point, right? Like it took an athletic play by Jordan Poyer to force that fumble. Yeah, you should be punished. You should lose possession. Yeah, I think I it's no a great rule. Yep, I have no issues with that rule. But he scores there. I mean, they punch that in. Game over. At two scores against Mahomes. It's over right then. If Tony wasn't offsides, the Bills' season's over. And if Hardman <laughs> just holds on to that. Yeah, I knew that Chargers game you can point to a handful of plays. That That's why you got to – you can't take wins away from teams, but it I think it was a little overblown all along that the Bills turned this magical corner and were the quote-unquote most dangerous team in football. And they to answer – Yeah, they found ways to make the playoffs. That's what they did. I think this answers your Kelsey question too, because I think the Chiefs, they're they they've been winning so much. This is their sixth trip in a row to the AFC Championship game that the, they've got a little you know Golden State Warriors, San Antonio Spurs, like yeah, like we're gonna take the regular season serious because they are taking it serious. Mahomes looked like he wanted to kill people at times this season. He was pretty animated, so I'm not saying that they're blowing it off, but. I think Kelsey, that's a prime example where he kind of gets it. He's played 179 games in his career, right? He's, he's 34 and a half years old. The dude has taken a lot of hits. Um, I'd imagine being a, a large human as, as John, as Joshua Briscoe said on, on that preview pod, he kind of compared him to a moose, like an old moose. You know, he doesn't want to get a hit. It's not fun to be hit by a moose, but I think, Kelsey just knew he had to ramp it up this game. I mean, it's the playoffs. It's the divisional round. Another trip to the AFC title. Like He's just, not to say he wasn't trying hard in the regular season, but I, you could just see a little more pop to his game, couldn't you? Like there, there was something extra to Kelsey in this one. Five catches, 75 yards, the touchdowns. I felt like the Chiefs are enjoying being on the road. Almost like a bonding thing. Like, hey, we haven't done this before. This is fun. Like, almost like a new challenge. And they're all kind of just, hey, they're in a, they're in their hotel room together in Buffalo, New York. You know, they're like, where are we right now? Like, we haven't, we don't play up here. Yeah, I wonder if what, what they do when they're in town. I didn't get the scoop at where they were hanging. Yeah. They work some chicken wings in. Probably not. That that weigh you down a little bit. Oh, I'm just talking about. I'm just talking about Taylor Swift. She's not eating any wings. You know what, though? What's crazy, Jim, is <laughs> we were texting during it, and, and you called it. Like, you were hoping for this matchup because you knew it would be a clean game, a perfect it's, game. It's perfect. It really reminded me of um, – there's a game in 2014. was at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and they, the Packers played the Patriots at Lambeau Field. So it was like Brady's trip to Lambeau. Rodgers was the MVP that year. It was, I think it was maybe 26, 21, something like that. I mean, like no turnovers, no sacks, like no, very few punts, that kind of stuff where the quarterback play is sublime. Mm-hmm. The margin for error is, is minuscule. It, it was that game with Allen and Mahomes going back and forth. You just had the feel throughout this game that like whoever – drops a ball whoever like god forbid fumbles like is instantly going to lose the game (laughs) and then all of a sudden like i tweeted this it was like this perfect game just unannounced decided to throw back jaeger bombs and it just it just went crazy 
between McCole Hardman and, or, I'm sorry, the fake punt, Tamar Hamlin, fourth and four, which is, it's crazy that we've been discussing the game this long and we're just now bringing that up because so McCole Hardman gave the ball right back. But yeah, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, it's hard. I don't like questioning calls in general you know coaches get a feel for things they put in their work during the week so they know they can run it they know the situation they want to run it in it's usually calculated it never it just that game didn't have that feel that that was needed then to me just let let josh allen do his thing just go for it with josh just go for it with josh it's okay i wouldn't care if he went for it yeah because he said something he's right at that point you're not they weren't stopping him anymore the stops were done. Yeah. So go go ahead. It doesn't matter if they're going to go 60 yards or 40 yards. Let's go for it. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, I I don't – I'm not going to kill him no. for going for it. I mean, no. this is what makes Dan Campbell great. The thing is, Dan Campbell has kind of built his team on these kind of risks from, from day one where it just seemed a little out of character – Whenever, like, when the Bills have been aggressive at times, it's it's encouraging. Like, maybe Sean is changing. He's calling timeouts at the end of a half to preserve time for Josh Allen or going for it on fourth and one at midfield when he would have punted before. And there were, like, these little promising signs, and that that felt out of character. That felt extreme. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I, I'm like you. I, I have a hard like, – every, everybody's talking about it today. Um, I don't know. I liked it being aggressive. I guess if anything, yeah, put the ball in Josh Allen's hands, not Tamar Hamlin's hands. If you're going to go for it, I always say this to anybody. Like to me, it's how can you go to bed at night if you're that whatever job you do. I'm not just talking about head coach. Whatever your profession is, how are you going to go out that night? How are you going to go to sleep at night? And if I'm going to sleep at night, I'm not going there banging my head over if I should have been running a fake punt to Tamar yeah. Hamlin. I'm going out saying on fourth down, I gave Josh Allen the ball, he missed a throw, or we dropped a wide open pass, something like that. I can sleep at night better that way. I think that's probably the takeaway for me. For the Buffalo Bills in this game is they're not thinking that way. They're not thinking, how do we pursue a Super Bowl through the lens of Josh Allen? And we've had this discussion a million times since 13 seconds. Like the most important person in the building is number 17. And until everybody's on board with that, this is the kind of end you're going to get in a playoff game every single time because you're going to draft D linemen that give you one tackle in a playoff game. You're going to overpay D linemen that give you one tackle in a playoff game. Like and until you A, are acquiring these players in the draft, rapid fire as much as you can and then use them and stress the field vertically and trust Josh Allen. And I, I'd be a little concerned because you have to assume as we record this now, like Joe Brady sticks as the OC he, he, for what he was asked to do. I mean, McDermott's fingerprints are all over this offense. I mean, since the wind game in 2021, when he at the press conferences, you know, blasting the offense for not running the ball, you know, not not finishing drives, all that stuff. I mean, it seems like this has been a trend and a move toward running the ball more toward this. This this was the moment, right? This was the the, the climax of this philosophical offensive change that Sean clearly has wanted for a long time. And again, for those who haven't read the McDermott Problem series, I, I kind of break this down how it got to this point when that story came out, but th th they were running the ball really well through this stretch. They were running the ball really well this game. And now Brady probably sticks. And now you're going to lose some guys on defense. And now you're going to be feeling like you probably should keep running the ball in 2024 to take some pressure off that defense. Like that's what would concern me. If I'm a bills fan, you're straying away from like the dude, that you have a quarterback. You're, you're getting away from what is going to win you four games in a row to get to a Super Bowl, you know? Like, it's him. Like, Josh Allen in full 
gives you the best chance against Mahomes, Lamar. Oh, by the way, Joe Burrow will be healthy next year. All right. And who knows who else? It things just click and joins that conversation. So Herbert, I, I don't, I Herbert, <laughs> I don't think a power rushing attack is is the answer to winning a Super Bowl. No, you got to no. no. No, they're fine. It, it, I mean, they're fine. As long as you have the quarterback, you, you, you're fine. You'll, you'll get it figured out. They need some new faces, I think. It's time. And that's in Dallas. Just kind of having the same conversation, I think. Like, all right, Mike McCarthy's staying. They've won a lot of regular season games. You're going to have to pay C.D. Lamb now. Dad, like, where do you improve? Like, where does the change come? Like, he already kind of got rid of Kellen Moore. And now Dan Quinn's doing those interviews, and he'll kind of be shown the door. I mean, the Bills have gone through that. Leslie Frazier. Well, several assistants left on their own accord because they didn't want to work for Sean. Dorsey fired midseason. Brady in. So that change alone tells you where this thing is going. This thing is going toward Sean having that imprint on the offense. And, hey, mate, look, if Diggs catches that ball, we have to say, if he catches that ball, they win this game. They're in the AFC Championship game. Who knows what happens? I get it. I get it. But Patrick Mahomes is, is inevitable. Like, he is not going anywhere. He is always going to find a way to win these games in the fourth quarter. Uh, I, you just got to go toe-to-toe with them, in my opinion. I know. I was just thinking about it. Are they going to play next year in the playoffs? <laughs> I mean, it's almost like it's just the great – it's become the great basketball, you know, whatever those great basketball matchups used to be. But, however, whichever one was your favorite growing up, whether it was – mine was Isaiah Thomas. He's my favorite player. So, it was always Isaiah getting through – Larry Bird, yeah. Jordan, Magic. Here's an interesting question, and I I have a sneaking suspicion that we'll probably pick the same team, but I'll ask you first. Who's the team in the AFC that hurls itself into this conversation in 2024 that is a legit contender that can play that kind of game that we just saw last night? where you've got to be perfect. You got to go drive for drive with Mahomes. You know, maybe they just need a few tweaks in the off season to get there, but they've, they've got a shot because here's what we know. We know Josh Allen, as long as he's quarterback, the bills are in that conversation, Patrick Mahomes and the chiefs, Lamar Jackson will be the MVP. Joe Burrow with the Bengals. Um, and, and we've got a lot of other teams. Go ahead. No, I'm, I think the naturals, everybody's going to, if Harbaugh takes that job with Herbert, I'm intrigued. See, I'm going a different direction. That's a great one, though. I no, like I'm that. saying I'm intrigued by that. I'm just thinking. I haven't really, no, go ahead. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens with Bobby Slowick, but I really like where the Texans are going. I mean, he's in the, because they have the guy that's in the mix. Stroud is in the quarterback hierarchy. Correct. It's a good yes. call. I agree. And I you. know that they kind of got beat down in that second half uh, against Baltimore, they, but it was they, they did what they could. They, uh, they weren't ready to beat them yet. That Baltimore defense just they dominated them. Um I I like that. No, no okay. tank Dell. You have to think they'll be able they'll be able to pay for they're some pieces. You that's a great call. Yeah, they're, they're they've great. got some financial flexibility and a quarterback. It's not Hyperbole to call that what one about, of the best rookie seasons ever. You know who I thought you were going to say was uh, Richardson coming back to the Colts. Oh my gosh! But it still adds Forget another. That. It still does add another weapon in the in the conference. Um, yeah. Anyway, no, you're right though. The Stroud is that's no joke. Uh, you got a. Uh... I'm just taking a look here. I mean, hey, Russell Wilson, maybe you run that back in Denver, you know. Um, I refuse. I'm good on I don't want to talk about him, Daniel Jones. I can't. I just I, – those. I, I need a break from those those guys. Well, Kenny Pickett, QB1 in Pittsburgh. Yeah, put him in the mix too. We should have a mix of guys that 
it's just that's not I tough can't enough. I can't quit pick it quite yet. I can't quit. I can't either. I agree. He deserves a chance to compete. He deserves to see if he can be. Oh, I don't even know how good he can be. He what else like did we not hit on with the Bills? You know, any anything else that no, the you change know, driving this thing forward, like is yeah, you're gonna see the changeover. That's what we're gonna see. I'm interested to see it too. I haven't put enough. You know, I haven't studied the safety position enough around the league or who who they would revamp it with, but coaches don't want to lose the quarterback of the defense. Like uh, Jim Leonard would still be playing if Rex Ryan was coaching somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, you know what? If you're looking for a sign of hope, I mean Matt Milano's pretty damn good. He just happens to be your best defensive player. But, That's well, a pretty big addition. I wonder if Hyde is that guy like is Hyde? Do they just keep him somehow find a way to try to keep him based on his intellect and quarterback of the defense? You do yeah, see he you seems see, like a timeless yeah. player. You see um, those veteran safeties that just play forever because they're so smart. Yeah. Coaches can't, they just, they can't lose those guys. There's no, they know there's no value. Like when they come up in the meetings, like right now, when you have your off season, like, you know, the hide yeah. comes up. I can just hear Sean saying, yeah, just whatever that takes to get done, get it done. <laughs> like, well, if you were yeah. in those meetings. I mean, I think it's good to remember that off season of 2017 when, you know, you and Doug were a part of that initial rebuild oh, post Rex where you're, you're looking for a lot of high character players, right? Like even a guy like Patrick DeMarco, who I talked to for uh, the series, I think he was that off season, you know, smart on a Super Bowl team with Atlanta. Yeah, we, you know, Hoyer, Hyde, Hauschka was the kid. I mean, there were mm -hmm. a lot of really smart signings that you guys made to yeah. to help with the culture. You're right. I mean, that 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 was a building yeah. that needed turn turnover within the roster. And like this is how you work day in and day out. Like, let's get that kind of guy. Sean was that was like first. And that's how it was in Philly too. So I wasn't surprised. Like Sean, when it comes to character, like usually you just try to, I don't want to say that you don't um, make exceptions because we've talked about it. Production equals tolerance, but Sean wasn't messing around. This, this thing needed cleaned up. And it made me think of when Sean Payton came into New Orleans and gradually got rid of Aaron Brooks, Dante Stallworth, Joe Horn. He said, no, no, he, he wasn't about their talent. It was just like, let's get this thing how I want it. I want the players that, buying into you know the new and we did that with trey white was an alt you know high character deon dawkins was high character um funny enough zay jones was considered high character for us um, ecu and, and, and we the, had the coach. cleanest of clean characters out and of college we his coach, and we had his right, coach on staff who, you know um and my point of that was all those picks were we were signed off. Sean wasn't messing around with any, I'm not going to lie. I was always the one that would challenge every, you know, there, you know, I just have to always say, Sean, are you sure about this running back from, he's like, no, I, we're not going to do that. So, okay. Just want to make sure. Just checking one last time. He, he had, his gun was registered, Sean. It was registered, but you know, just, but no, I always think if it's that. registered, always, hey, protection, I Second sneak, Amendment. I always, I was always trying to sneak somebody in, maybe, but. But I think that that's. This is a a little bit of a transition period where you're losing some word. of those guys Good now. Word. I mean, you're you're going to lose those type of players that have really been the glue in this locker room, and and even guys they've signed since then, you know, that that are going to be free agents. Um like a Tyrell Dodson, you know, he, he's been around a while, special teamer, played well at inside backer for you. He's a free agent. You know, there's a lot of small decisions and a lot of big decisions. And man, is Josh Allen, if he's your quarterback, can make a lot of problems disappear. I think for the Bills' sake, if you're a fan of this team, you just hope that they operate with that at the forefront of mind because – the direction of where things went this season, it wasn't like the wheels came off. Obviously, they're winning games. But it always kind of felt like, is this going to work? When they're they're squeaking past Easton Stick and letting you know Mason Rudolph hang. Or, like, is this 
there's just so many moments this season, even before Brady. You know, the Tampa Bay game is a great example. Thursday night. They should have just ran away with that, just pounded them. It should have been like 31 to 10 before you blink. And they just kind of grab ass around, right? To use a, a term that popped up on the, the, the Bob pod. They're just grab assing and punting at midfield. And next thing you know, Baker Mayfield's throwing a Hail Mary that Chris Godwin, if he turns around, he catches. It's just, there were so many moments this season with this Bills team where it's like, bury him. Like the Mortal Kombat, finish him. Like just kill this team. Put your foot on the throat, kill him off. And they, they didn't really do it even in some of these wins. The Bucks, the Chargers, the Patriots. You know, it always kind of felt like this inferior opponent is hanging around. And that lack of a killer instinct, it's always hard to quantify, but it was there. Like they didn't, they didn't have that killer instinct. And I think they did have it that month up to 13 seconds two years ago. Like that was a team that found a killer instinct. And it was like, they beat this Chiefs team. They host the Bengals. I think they would have blown them out. They would have won that game as, as high as I've been on the Bengals. And then they're beating the Rams at the Super Bowl. So just another season that got away from the Bills. And it's unbelievably frustrating for everyone involved, I'm sure. All right, Jim, this was uh, – I'd say it was fun. I don't know if it was necessarily fun for the, for the listeners, recap. but hopefully they gained a little something. Good recap. There are more football games this season, everyone, and we are going to cover everything. Lions 49ers, Ravens Chiefs. We will get to both of these games later in the week. I'm actually going to drive out to good old Allen Park, Michigan. Head on out there to Bob McGinn country, as they say. See uh our other pod co-host as well, but um, do some lion stuff. So follow everything, go along td.com. Thank you so much for listening, for reading everything this season. Greatly appreciate it. As always, just completely powered by our readers, listeners at the site and here on the pod. It's always a good time, Jim. I, I want to do something in person soon this off season. We always say it. How's the schedule? Oh, it's tough, but thanks Tyler. That was a good recap. Good recap. Good therapy session. Thanks so much, everyone.